Welcome to this new Fractal Architect tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about the Lua scripts and how to use them and how to write your own. We have make new here where you make new random fractals based on the variation set that you have uh, chosen. This is one of my own. And you have the random generation settings here. And you decide what uh, variations you want to use and you get a result of some sort and you have the scripted random uh, now this has been expanded very much upon we have much more factory scripts here uh, you have uh, all these scripts that say row, row crackle, row julia, row julia 3dx or Rho Julian, Rho Julia scope. These are uh, Lua scripts that I have made that contains just one variation. And it has that one variation in the normal group, and in the pre group, and in the post group. This Rho Julia, for example, let's try that one. You get some very basic Julias that look, have a lot of details and texture. And if we Take a look at one of these. You open it up in the X form editor. You can see I have a Julia here in the first transform. I have a Julia on the second transform, in the third transform, and I have a pre and post group there. And in the pre group, that's the Julia. In the post group, that's another Julia. And so on. In the pre and post groups, you have more of the same Julia. You have no final transform. But that's how the row uh, scripts are built. And they are built that way to give you building stones that you can keep on and change and use. If we have very complex uh, scripts and fractals, they are not as easily manipulated. This is kind of like starting a new blank fractal it's the easy way to do that I can use a Julia here too uh, Julia use the plus button to enter it with one wait and I can have another Julia enter wait one on that too and I start to move them about and get that famous Julia look. But I can here also here make new groups, a pre-group with a Julia, of course. Why not? And you can start build it, but if you start with a row fractal uh, Lua scripts you get a, a little head start so you can choose to use that way to work or you can start from the scratch or you can just uh, make random fractals and see what you like and render those and you can make random fractals and see what you like what you like and edit them and there are many ways to the same goal just like in Photoshop or any other big application uh, there are many ways to reach the same same goal in Fractal Architect 2. Uh, I can show you one thing that is of you know, interest here. And if I make another pre here, and I enter a matrix, what that does, uh, this triangle here, let me manipulate the matrix of, uh, of that whole transform but if I enter a pre-group here that gets, gets manipulated along with the normal group in the in the transform what if I want just want to change the settings for 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 the pre-group then I can add another pre-group and the matrix and go to this variation tab 
And when I move that around, what I do is I uh, change the other pre-group, not the normal group, and not the whole transform. And that gives you a very powerful way to manipulate the shapes. You can nest uh, a lot of, of, of variations with each other, as so to speak. So, I like that one. If you saw my, uh, my layer, working layers uh, tutorial, you know that I looked for centerpieces and backgrounds, and this is a perfect background. Let's put it in the stash. So, I don't want to work with it, with it now, I have it in the stash. So, now let's see what you can do with Lua scripts. You don't only have scripts that uh, give you a new random fractal, but you have tweak scripts that are very powerful. And they are more powerful now in this version of Fractal Architect than it was in Fractal Architect 4. You have a lot of uh, factory scripts here that are sorted into categories. And here you have a list with your own that you make yourself. Since many of my scripts have ended up in the factory scripts, I have copies of them here too, if you recognize something. So what you do is say that you want to add a post variation group. Add post version. Now you want to decide what you want to fill that post variation with. And now we have something here that's also this new uh, called script arguments. If I click the script arguments, I get this window here. I can go to setup variables, and here I have all the variations that are available in this variation set. So I can choose which one I want to insert as a post. Let's try to insert a post heart, see what that will give us. Close this one, and I make another spin. That's a good one. And now you will understand why I fill up my stash in no time. Because I always find good ones. <laughs> okay. But uh, see, I want to do something more. I want to go wild. Who doesn't want to go wild? So let's add something else. Let's add a hypertile. I can put that one here. Now I have the add post. Now I have the add post variation, and I have the have the hypertile. And you see, I get both of those newer scripts in the new random fractals here, and I can. Continue building here. Uh, there are two types of, of, of uh, Lua script actually. The types that add something and the type that change something. The scale, for instance. The default scale is 200. And if you zoom in and make that number bigger than 200, you run the risk of getting noisy fractals. So I seldom do that. but Adding a hypertype, that adds a lot of shape that's out of field, you can't see them. So you might want to zoom out a bit. Scale 100. Now you see more of the shapes around here. And when you have found something that you like to use and give you a good result, but you don't want to add every one of these steps every time you want to use them. You can save the list as a new script. Give it a new name and it will end up in this field here. So you can add all these with just 
one script. Uh, that's a very useful and uh, a lot of the scripts that I have been using here is built up like that. So now let's see what we can do more of these scripts. Uh, we start from scratch there. Bring you back to this. The Julius. And uh, I can use uh, other two. I have the Fibonacci. Uh, that's symmetry. And if we we'll take a look at the Fibonacci here, what it is, show script. This is the Fibonacci script. And it uses the Fibonacci numbers as symmetry. The Fibonacci numbers can be found all over nature. And uh, they are present in the number of petals on a flower, or the, the number of uh, storms on the North Pole of Jupiter, and everything in between. These numbers can, find, can be found all over nature, and I think that using these numbers for symmetry gives you more natural-looking fractals. Uh, but I have it now from minus 1 to plus 13 and I thought that if I use that one let's see you see this is probably plus 13 and that's too much symmetry to really look good so I made another one uh, Fibonacci minus 13 as you can see it doesn't have the minus 13 or the plus 13 So if you think the symmetry doesn't look good with 13, just use the other one. Or if you want to use any other numbers, you can edit these yourself. If I make a couple of these, copy it uh, here. Should have two of those now. Or unnamed, maybe unnamed. What's this? Is that the Fibonacci? No, that's another one. But never mind. We take this Fibonacci and we change it. Edit script. And I want to use. Another number there. Let's make something that's out of this world. 50. Yeah. Save. And let's change this to plus 50. You can recognize it. All right. Let's try our new Fibonacci script with plus 50. It would look Awful, probably, but yeah, you get a lot higher symmetry numbers. So, you also have scripts in here for making images that are widescreen 69. You see, yeah, that you get a new aspect ratio. Or you want, might want to use a one by one, get square images. And it's easier to make fractals when you have the right aspect ratio from the start, sometimes. So, what else do we have? Let's explore. You can add blurs. I like adding blurs, add radial blurs. See, you have that beautiful radial blur in these random fractals. And let's say, let's make a script of our own. 
if we look at this add blur how they are how it is constructed you can see a lot of code here but you don't have to get into that code I can do like this I add a post variation and I decide what I want to put in it blur pixelize let's try that interesting but I would like smaller blocks there let's edit it uh, scale you have this is the weight from minus 2 to 2 and that might be too much let's make it just 1 we have the size here let's make it smaller oh I want to shake that one like that and the scale I want to make that smaller and how will it look then yeah say so yeah, I like that one say oh I don't I want the scale to be bigger actually uh, 1.5 no that's the wrong button this is the right button I can keep changing it till I find a good outcome a good outcome for this when you writing a script is that you get a bunch of good fractals and every roll dice you do and you keep editing it to till you get a bigger number of good fractals on every roll still not satisfied sa satisfied with that one let's make it two again like that like that, close it, roll dice. I think that is better. That's a better result. So, what we do now? Well, save list as new script, and I call it add blur. Pixelize like that, and here I have it add blur pixelize. If I remove the script, I get this result, and if I use the add blur pixelize, I get that pixelated effect that I wanted. That's a very easy way to make your own scripts. And I show you another thing. Let's say you want to have a script that changes the scale. Have in the factory script now you have 200, you have 100, 150, 40, 50, 70. And let's say I want even I want a bigger one. I want to make it bigger. Let's look at this. This is the context that you write it in. Flame dot scale equals 200. So, if I want to write another script here, click the plus button, and some here I have an unnamed. I can filter it. Unnamed. What's in it? Nothing. Okay. So now we write a script here. Uh, edit script, yes. Start with the flame. Dot scale uh, equals. Where do I have my equal? I'm a Swede using a, an, an American uh, keyboard, but sometimes I have to search for stuff 
So let's make it 300. Not recommended, but uh, let's do it anyway. Yeah. Save. And we call it scale 300. Okay. Where do we have our scale 300? We have scale 300 there. And you get a scaled up fractal. Let's look at that in the X4 editor just to see what we have done. Uh, here, scale 300. And it's that easy to write them. It's not very hard. You can look at what's already there and you can see the syntax and you can use it. Let's take another look at it. We had here flame dot scale equals 300 and let's look at one of the brightness brightness 25 flame dot brightness equals 25 and there are other things that you can do if you look at the Fibonacci script again Fibonacci minus 13 Here we have first said that Fibonacci, that's this series of numbers. And we put value equal Fibonacci, and this is the uh, syntax for making random choices. Math dot random and in a parenthesis Fibonacci, this is the numbers. I had to have help from Steven to make this script, but uh, if you know your way about scripts, you can easily make them. And I will try to make a tutorial or put some resource out that show you how to to write scripts, more complex scripts. But I have to learn to do it myself first. This is what I have managed to do without knowing very much about scripts. So, what can we do more? We have a, another category of scripts here that are very interesting. It's called splicing. That's new also. And that lets you take stuff from one fractal and put it into another. If I use this, uh, you see it we have post concat here is the concatenation, and you have post plus matrices concatenation. Matrices, then you put in the matrix uh, in another post group, so you can change the 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 added variation around. So let's use that one. So what you do? You go to the script arguments, and now you. Not supposed to be on that tab there, but script arguments here. And here you have plus script arguments, my script arguments, plus factory script arguments. And if I use this, I can enter a uh, one of the factory scripts. Uh, row what? Take a row loony. See what that will give us. It will take the variations from the row loony and it will add them as post in a post groups to this row eula scripts here. You can see here script arguments. I have the row loony, row loony. So if you have several of these or other stuff that you can change with the script arguments, you can see here what you have. So, how does this look? You remember how the role Julia was built? You had Julians everywhere. Not Julians, you had Julia everywhere. So let's now take a look at that one and see what this post matrices concatenation script has done. 
Here we have Yulia, and you see we, suddenly we have four post groups. We have the matrix, we have the loony, this one is empty, and that is another matrix. If you want to, you could get rid of those because they don't do anything. Uh, what part of the fractals is this? It's that middle part there. And you can do they can you can then move around the matrix. Let's reset it first. And you move it around to find something interesting, yes. But you see we have changed this row of Julia now. And we have a lot of more post groups with Looney. Pre still Julia, but that one's one one was empty. Here. Post Julia. That hasn't changed. So it doesn't insert the Looney in all uh, transforms just in some, and that is randomly chosen. Here yeah, you have Looney. You can change it and you can do all, all sort of stuff. Like that. And this... I close that one now, we don't need it. These uh, splicing scripts have almost as big influence on the fractal how they look like the final trans transform does so you can do a lot with this I have found that post uh, um, looks give you the best results but pre plus matrix can also be very good let's try that we can use the same argument you don't miss the button. Oh, we have to select that one first. Uh, add script. Oh, well, row looney. So we use the same one. You see, we have script, row looney. And you get another result. Oh, that one. That's beautiful. Let's stash that one. Interesting. Okay, I want to show you another thing when it comes to Lua scripts. Uh, we have here the row Julia, which gives these kind of random fractals. And we're going to change that with a script now. And we're going to choose a script called uh, Grid Tile. What grid tile does is that it inserts linear variations in four different transforms. Take a look at this one. You can see here that we have four different transforms with a weight of two that contains linear. And they are displaced a little less than four steps actually. And that gives this grid. You have the, this, the original, fra original fractal, and every uh, transform with a linear that is translated give you a copy of that. So if we zoom out on this one, you get a grid with a lot of lot of uh, Julias there. So this. Grid tile script can be changed with a with the script arguments. So how to select it like that, and some of these scripts can be changed with script arguments, and some of them can't. So how do you know which ones can be changed? Well, you have the code here, and at the top of the code, almost at the top of the code. You have script arguments here. You can see what arguments you can use. So in this grid tile you can use x offset, 
Y offset, scale, brightness and gamma. And if I want to use them, I click the plus sign here, I get a new argument and I call it X offset. Make sure you get the spelling right. And you make another, I call it Y offset. I have to give them a value. As you saw in the original setup of the this script, it adds four transforms with linear and translate them roughly about 3.5 units in all the directions. So if I use this and I can write hmm, not V2, 2 and in the Y I use I write 6 units. That means it will displace the transforms with linear two units this way and six units that way and you get another result you see that looks quite different let's take a look at that in the export editor and you have the linears here and there and you don't even see that one because it's up there and there. So you can get a lot of different effects depending on how you set the, the translation of the transforms linear in the grid time. So there's a lot to explore there to find interesting shapes. Let's make another setting. Use the grid tile and make it zero dot five and zero dot two. Okay, now you don't translate the transforms very much at all, not even one unit, and you get this result. Doesn't look like much. So let's add another uh, argument here. You can use scale too. Scale. And I don't know what scale it is using in default. Let's try 200. See what that will give us. Yes. Interesting. Looks like a wallpaper or something. You can see that this one is the brightest and they get less bright as you go out from the center of here. Let's see if we can do something about that. If we change this to five instead, what will happen? Increase the weight. Yeah, the brightness increases. So you can combine all of these arguments. You have scale now, you have X offset and you have Y offset. And, and of course you can add something more to this. I have here, let's see, uh, do I have it? I have to search for it here. Post concatenation simul4. Using the simul4 uh, random script. I can get this result. And that's without using the XForm editor at all. Actually, we just went into the XForm editor to see what, what these scripts are doing. So if you know your stuff, you can make very precise random fractals using this system.
if you don't know that much about what is going on, you can just try to combine different scripts and see what you get. Uh, let's try and add a. I have made a script here that is not among the factory scripts. A hypertile. Where is it? Here, final hypertile. Uh, I have simply added a hypertile with the. Uh, Add normal variation finals and I save that as a script. And you get this result. Oh, that was nice. That's a nice pattern. Very nice indeed. Let's wait for the final resolution to kick in. Yes, 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 yes. I want to keep that put it in the stash. So that's uh, script arguments and what you can do with them. And if you wonder if a script have script arguments, just take a look at it and see if you find this you find these uh, arguments here in the code here. If you don't, it doesn't have arguments.